Hello everyone and welcome to this talk. I am Matthias Karlbauer. I am PhD student at the University of Tübingen in the south of Germany since roughly two years now. And the goal of my PhD project is basically to investigate how we can produce weather forecasts by means of data-driven approaches. That is, for example, artificial or in particular recurrent neural networks. In this talk, I would like to introduce you in first insights and first achievements about how we might get an idea of um, modeling weather and get, an, get a foothold on approaching this uh, rather complex phenomenon. In the paper that we are now going to talk about, we have developed a novel recurrent neural network architecture uh, incorporating principles from graph neural networks to model spatiotemporal processes. We want to model spatiotemporal processes because we consider weather as one of these uh, spatiotemporal processes. And as you probably know, weather can be, can be seen as highly complex dynamical process which can be described by rules from physics and chemistry. Now, a crucial component of weather or of spatial temporal processes in general is that the same fundamental physical and chemical principles apply everywhere on Earth, so spatially, location in the rind, and that these uh, physical and chemical principles, or these principles in general, that they that these apply or that these can be modified by local context such as for example vegetation or the topography if we consider weather now in the scope of this presentation we are going to have a look at properties of spatial temporal processes next and then we will have a look at distana the distributed artificial neural network architecture that we have developed and first looking at the architecture details and principles and then looking at some demonstrations how Distana models spatial temporal processes. In the end, we'll have a brief summary and uh, a, a short recapitulation of recent, more exciting and additionally exciting achievements. Good, so let's have a look at the properties of spatial temporal processes. Then let's first look at this two dimensional circular wave, an exemplary spatial temporal process that we have implemented. Um, let me first show what you see here. At the left, you see the two-dimensional spatial temporal process, a wave propagation through the space over time, being uh, activated or induced at one particular position in the two-dimensional field. And then a wave um, propagates circularly from this point source outwards. The, the wave activity or the, the water surface, more or less, if you want so, um, is is uh, visualized in the right-hand plot. So you see the activity of this pixel over time in this plot. Now consider the following video. You see that the wave is initiated at, at a particular position and then circularly uh, propagates outward and is being reflected at borders and that the activity becomes rather complex uh, quite soon. Now, as we've already heard, the, the process is location in the rind and the local state uh, exclusively depends on the activity in the very own, at the very own position uh, from the previous time step and at the activity in the neighboring regions. And this, these two principles, basic principles, are a fundamental thing of our novel architecture, Distana, which we will have a look at now. So, Consider again this rather simple three by three matrix, uh, the spatial temporal process. And if we want now to model the dynamics at each pixel, at each, at, at each position, we of course have to put some instance on top of each pixel virtually to model the activity. And that's been done by putting a so-called prediction kernel on top of each uh, pixel virtually. And these prediction kernels, they are basically um, rather compact and compla or, 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 compressed uh, small neural network architectures consisting of a small uh, feed forward, uh, fully connected layer, um, then followed by a, a recurrent LSTM structure, and again followed by uh, another post-processing fully connected uh, layer. 
Now, what this uh, prediction kernel, which is positioned at each uh, place uh, in space, receives as input, it receives dynamic input, which resembles to the activity at the uh, associated position where the, where the kernel is positioned more or less. And it additionally receives lateral information from neighboring prediction kernels, such that each prediction kernel is aware of the current state of the neighboring positions, of the neighboring prediction kernels. And additionally, we may put some static uh, or additionally um, add some uh, static input to the prediction kernel, such as obstacle information or vegetation information in case of weather prediction. Mm. Now, a crucial ingredient of, the, of this architecture is that all these prediction kernels share weights. That is, basically, there only exists one of these prediction kernels, and this one prediction kernel is applied in parallel at every position in the two-dimensional grid in this example. Um, yeah, this, this, this principle of shared weights basically is taken or inspired by the convolutional principle where a filter is applied over the entire image in parallel, um, which at, at the first hand reduces the number of uh, parameters dramatically and also reduces the, the number of uh, required uh, training examples and increases the, the learning speed uh, significant, uh, significantly. We can, we can now uh, understand this local invariance as being some inductive bias that we, uh, that we use to, to model this TANA. So we set up this TANA to, to actively uh, use a bias that, that means that local invariance applies. Good, so let's have a look at how this TANA models the two-dimensional spatiotemporal process. What you see here is the ground truth uh, of the circular wave expanding uh, outwards and being reflected at the borders. And then additionally, the, the output or the activity of three different models, uh, like here, convolutional LSTM, temporal convolutional network, and this TANA in the right-hand side. Um, what you additionally see at the bottom, as you've seen before, is the, the wave activity at one particular position in the two-dimensional field for each of these different um, plots in the top, so for the ground truth and the three models. Now looking at the video, you can see that after the teacher forcing ends, meaning that after there's no real data fed into the model anymore and the model feeds itself, uh, with its own output from the previous time step, meaning being applied in closed loop to, to produce a, um, a prediction to the future, to unroll into the future, you see that both convolutional LSTM and TCN, they both lose track of the signal quite soon. So after just like 10, 10 um, time steps, both convolutional LSTM as well as TCN are losing track of the, of the ground truth signal or the, the, the actual signal. Whereas this TANA is pretty close, actually impressively close to the ground truth, even after, um, after several uh, closed loop uh, application steps. Now going on, looking at the video, you see that this TANA keeps staying impressively close at the real signal, whereas LSTM and TCN really lose track of the signal. So repeating this briefly, you see that Distana impressively accurately models the ground truth process without, ex with, without any access to the data anymore. So this shows that with normal training, Distana in fact seems to model the spatial temporal process impressively well. Now, what we wanted to elaborate is whether Distana is prone to over overfitting or whether it is robust against overfitting. And to test this, we've trained Distana and the other models on just one single training example, um, feeding one and the same wave um, sequentially or uh, multiple times through the network for training, and then applying the network, the trained network on the different wave to see whether it can still generate, generalize to different, to different um, data. And what you see here is again, that in fact, this TANA seems or in fact is quite close to the, to the true signal again. Certainly it is not as precise as before, but still the activities are certainly reasonable and much closer to the ground truth compared to Contralocium and TCM. 
The third and the last uh, thing I want, want to, to show you or to, to uh, demonstrate is the generalization capabilities on larger grids. Because as, we have, as we've heard before, Tistana consists of just one single prediction kernel which can be applied over an arbitrary or an, an, um, an arbitrary um, desired sized grid. That is, we have trained Tistana on a 16 by 16 grid as, as usually as, as you have seen before. And then we have applied it to a grid sized uh, 40 by 40 kernels, meaning that Tistana had to propagate the wave over much longer distances than it has ever done before during training. And now again, looking at the video, you see that in fact, Tistana is capable of modeling the wave over these long distances, although it has never seen these, these long um, activities or these long um, propagating waves in training, meaning that it probably generalizes to, to different um, field sizes. Quite impressive to our, to our thoughts. Well, that's it for the paper. Let's look, uh, let's, let's briefly sum it up. As we've heard, um, this TANA incorporates some inductive bias, meaning that dynamic prop propagations adhere to the same location environment principles. And with this inductive bias, and this TANA both learns fast and accurately, and also and realizes great generalizations. Now, the last thing that I would like to share with you is the recent achievements that we had when applying this TANA to different problems. At first, we, we tried to, to elaborate whether this TANA can be used to denoise a very um, noisy distributed sensor signal. And to do so, we integrated active tuning, a retrospective tuning mechanism to tune hidden neural uh, states of this TANA in order to produce reasonable dynamics that can be explained by the, the, the gen dynamics that this TANA has been observed, uh, has been observing during training. Now, to explain what I mean, what we did was we fed impressively noisy data into the model to produce the ideal clean data. Now, um, what we see here is uh, two different uh, strategies of applying this TANA with the conventional teacher, teacher forcing uh, mechanism, and here the application of this TANA in combination with active tuning. Now, when playing the video, you will see that this TANA effect was impressively well when being applied with uh, active tuning to infer the clean signal from this heavily noisy data, which was to us uh, very impressive. Now, the last thing to see, or the, the most recent thing we did was to apply this TANA to real weather data, to, to a weather benchmark um, produced by RASP et al. And in fact, we, we uh, received highly promising results at predicting the global temperature dynamics of our planet. And additionally, what we did there was to infer static context that modified the observed temperature dynamics. And to see this, I will show you here the, the temperature dynamics that are subject to be predi uh, to prediction for this tunnel. And here, an inferred latent hidden code that freely emerged by using active tuning in order to improve this tunnel's capability or uh, ability at predicting and accuracy at predicting the temperature. So while this tunnel was trained to predict the temperature, the following information has been inferred automatically and intrinsically by using uh, active tuning. And what you see is that the land sea mask of our planet infer is being inferred, which makes totally sense because land or sea, whether there's land or sea below the, the unfolding temperature the dynamics is just a crucial, has just a crucial impact or a huge impact on the unfolding dynamics. So it makes totally sense that the land sea mask is being inferred. Good. So that's it for, for this presentation. I really want to, to thank you for listening and now I'm looking forward to answering your questions.